on Seattle. I'm Heather Bosch. From Kent to Capitol Hill, this is Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. News and talk powered by the Pacific Northwest. This is the Ron and Don Show on Cairo Radio 97.3 FM, Seattle Seahawks Station. All right, after almost 50 years, Ron uh, met his birth father over the holidays. Going to tell you about that here in just a moment. You want to text us, 98973. Love to hear from you. Rachel's here. We'll find out it's ringing her bell a little bit later. And then uh, coming up one hour from now, Ron and Don's uh, top five at five. And what are you going to do as uh, we get ready for Via Doom? Also, uh, tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, President Trump, Oval Office. And he has some things to say. So we're going to let him say those things. We'll carry it live at about 6.05 tomorrow night. You don't want to miss that. All right, let's get to uh, what are we talking about here, a special edition. Ron comes in and writes something every day, and then he presents it to us. And uh, this is very unique. This really moved me this morning because a lot of times he'll write something, then he'll send it to us. And he said, do you think this is too much? And I'm like, no, I think this is perfect. In fact, uh, I think this will resonate and this will help heal a lot of people and also maybe help them find courage to uh, reach out. All right, I want to tell you a true story today. Almost 50 years in the making, a story of love and war, a story of shame and suffering, a story of forgiveness and redemption. It's the story of how I finally met my birth father a little over a week ago down in Portland. His name is Joe. And we met at Floyd's Coffee Shop near the river for the first time. After our talk, I asked Joe if I could share our story, and he told me that I could. There are some details I want to keep private, but this meeting closed a circle in my heart that took many years. I was reunited with my birth mother in 2000. I did an interview with her and my mom a while back that's very interesting. That link is up at MyNorthwest.com if you want to hear that part of the tale. I'd resign myself to the fact that I was never going to hear Joe's side of the story, but I was wrong about that. Some efforts by his wife almost a year ago set things in motion, and I had to get to a place where I was ready to listen to his story. It begins, as far as it concerns my adoption, with a California teenager being sent off to war. Joe was a corpsman assigned to a medical ship off the coast of Vietnam before he turned 19 years old. After a stint tending to wounded Marines, he was transferred to a ward that housed 50 Vietnamese women and children ravaged by the horrors of war. He told me how seeing what he saw and doing what he had to do in that ward crushed his mind and his soul. He just couldn't process all the pain and suffering. In a moment of despair, he turned his back on God and turned to drugs and alcohol to numb himself. This was a little over a year or so before I would be conceived. While on a quick leave stateside, my birth mother realized she was pregnant and it was decided that adoption was the right choice. Joe had to return to the service and my birth mother made her way up to Mount Vernon, to deliver the baby. Joe told me how uh, this crippling shame and substance abuse hamstrung his life for many years after he left that medical ship. Suffering with untreated PTSD, he worked at a hospital until he finally became sober. A 12-step program was helping with the addiction, but working through his shame and guilt took a lot of years. I'm grateful that we were able to connect. I'm glad I was able to tell him that given the choice to grow up in the family I did, or with a teenage mother and alcoholic father suffering from PTSD, I think they made the right decision. As I listened and reflected on the power of shame, I told Joe in that coffee shop that the biggest shame that I see in this story is how he and tens of thousands of boys like him were destroyed in that war, then abandoned when they finally came home. I wrestled for a long time if I should even open the door, uh, this door in my life, but I'm glad I did. I've discovered that compassion, love, and forgiveness are never a bad choice. It took a lot of bravery to go to Vietnam. It took a lot of bravery to deliver a baby as a teenage girl and then give it away. And it took a lot of bravery to reconcile your past and choose to reconnect. So I guess my takeaway for you is that if you find yourself separated from someone important to you, don't lose hope. Joe, or was he uh, waiting for you? No, I got there first because you know I'm, I'm early to everything. It was, uh, it, it was intense. It was, it was strange. Uh, the first thing, because the you, you as a someone that's adopted, you uh, imagine someone your entire life. And I remember as a kid, uh, you you like to. I would project myself 
into popular culture. So I go, oh, maybe the the first baseman for the Dodgers is my dad. I kind of look, I pass the resemblance to him. Or maybe the guy in that movie is my uh, my dad because I sort of, you know, you just pick somebody that you think you kind of look like uh, when you're five or six or seven years old and you know that you're adopted. And so the first thing was straight, like I'm, I'm a lot taller than him. You can look at the picture. And so uh, I was like, oh, I guess, you know, I got the genetics from uh, my, I guess the the birth mother side of my family, the men and her her brothers are very tall. Mm-hmm. So I guess I, the genetic, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I'm much taller than both of them. So that part was was odd. And then I, I was just glad, he was very open and honest and trying to deal with, um, he's working on becoming more open as, as a man. And it's, what he went through is is difficult uh, to even imagine uh, being 18 years old and, and seeing the the wounds of, of war and the way that he did. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, what do you think your birth dad want out of this? Wanted, wanted out of this? Uh, I think he's well. What he told me he wanted is he wanted to meet me, which I think is is which I wanted to as well. And to paraphrase, is he's he's trying to. Um, He's just trying to reconnect parts of his life. Like, I think he, he uh, I mean, I don't have a ton of experience of people that have gone through addiction and 12 step. I have a little bit of experience, but it seems like when you do that, you're, most people are trying to cover up some pain in their life. And so you're trying to numb, you're trying to disconnect, you're trying to distance yourself from that. So it's, it's got to be difficult to then, figure out what that is and reconnect with it. So I think that's that's what it seems like. Uh, that's Does that make sense? Yes. That he's trying to just reconnect. So he spent a lot of years alone, a lot of years. Uh, and then we, we talked a little bit about Brene Brown, who deals with shame. Mm-hmm. Uh, he wasn't familiar with her with her books, but shame is a powerful thing when, you, when it's yeah. something that you go through. You had reached out to him a long time ago when you reached out to your birth mother, and wasn't there a phone call, and, and he had no interest in talking to you at that time? Well, well I that was my take on it. Okay. That, that is true. I did call him uh, around 2000, 2001, and we had one brief phone call. And, yeah, there, there's some details there that I'm, I'm going to leave between us, but he we, we talked about that, and uh, – I, I, I have a better understanding of what what was happening. Yeah. I, I let's just say that I hit him at a point in his life when it was he wasn't ready to to hear it. Yeah. So why were you ready to sit down and and what were you hoping for? Um, I went through thinking about this a lot, and I actually talked with my uh, can I go to a counselor? Uh, and it, it, I I sort of landed on the spot of I couldn't come up with an upside to being a jerk about it or to be like not doing, there was no upside to not no upside for me, you know, spiking the football or going, I gave you like being bitter or angry or whatever. Like I couldn't come up with scenario where that was a good idea. So um, I I think I I wanted to honor someone's effort. And then also he has him and his wife have a daughter, which would make her my half sister. Mm-hmm. And I remember what it was like to be. It's it's such a an, an unusual and unique thing to be adopted. Yeah. That you always there's a curiosity about something out there in the world. And so I wanted to make myself available to her, to mm-hmm. the daughter. Nice. I was like, if if she wants it, like if she's curious about it in the way that I was curious about it, I'd, I want her to to have access. So that was one of the big things as well. Yeah, you know, let's come back and talk about this because you have warned people before about reaching out. Sure. If there you're is. adopted, and there's very particular reasons why that Ron has shared, and I wanted to share those with you next. And then the online training cabin text line is open, 98973. We'd love to hear from you if you've been uh, adopted and reunited, and we'd love to hear how that went. Here's Tracy Taylor now with the cars. This traffic report this hour brought to you by Subaru Pial. What do you see? Our incident on South Bay 5 just north of Sunset has been cleared to the median. However, there's a little bit of a lineup there, and I'm hearing from a lot of you at 989-73 saying it's the sun glare that's slowing us down. It's kind of nice to have that, isn't it? South Bay 5 still a little difficult from just after Alderwood heading out towards 44th and Linwood and again through the convention center. Tacoma, I have not forgotten about you. Your drive continues to be slow between 
Highway 18 and heading out to the Dome. Definitely building right around Joint Base Lewis-McChord and continuing into parts of the Nisqually River Basin. Looking at a lineup on 512 for those of you heading out towards Canyon and around the South Hill Mall. Also looking at a lineup on River Road as we get a little bit closer to the 410-167-512 interchange. Drivers on uh, the east side are encountering a few delays. More on that in about 10 minutes. Traffic brought to you by Michael's Subaru Bellevue. Part of the family-owned Michael's Automotive Group for the life you live off I-90 at Eastgate or online at michaelsubaru.com. Cairo Radio, real-time traffic. I'm Tracy Taylor. All right, Tracy, thanks for that. And I think Ron's being real courageous right now, actually uh, sharing this story with you. Because you always warn people, and we're talking about Ron, his adoption, and he met his birth mother, and he shared this story on the radio uh, 18 years ago, uh, 19 years ago. And now to meet his birth father... Uh, you always warn people if you're going to reach out because your sister Leslie, who I was good friends with growing up too, uh, she was adopted in your family. You always warn people, be really careful about reaching out because there's a reason why you were put up for adoption. And you and, and you have to go into this with your wide, your eyes wide open, yeah. right? Yes, that's what when you, uh, in Washington State, you, you uh, if you are, this is so, such a, a niche field, I realize that, but they there's only three reasons why you're put up for adoption. It's either unwanted pregnancy, rape, or incest. Like those are the, the three categories, kind of, and so when you uh, go through the process through uh, a confidential intermediary, which is what the law says in, in Washington, they counsel you through that. But but as I was thinking about this, not not clearly, most people are not adopted, but I think most people do have someone in their life that has faded away, someone they're estranged with, someone that they miss, uh, someone that they wish they could connect with that they haven't connected with. And so I tried to keep that in mind that, you know, I, I had written this off. Like I had prepared myself that one of the, the, with the counselors that talk about one of the, the answer could be no. The answer that you're looking for could be no. And so when you, you know, seek out uh, to track someone down or to reconnect with someone, the answer could be no. And so it was, I was like, well, it was yes with my birth mother. And it turns out to be no with my birth father. And I just had dealt with that. Like I, I, I was hurt at the beginning. Uh, and then, you know, he was like, okay, like he has the right to say no. And he said no. And so I think just to broaden it for everybody, like uh, I think most people have that person. It could be uh, someone you dated. It could be an ex. It could be uh, a friend that you had in high school or whatever. Most people have that person in their lives that's like, Ah, I, I regret the way that went down, or I wish I could have connected with them again. And and I guess my message with this is, it it's I guess it's never too late until it's too late. You know, until one of you passes away. Uh, and up until that point, I, I think there's if you're open minded about it. Uh, and and I really had to get out of my head and set aside any sort of anger that I had or any sort of desire to not forgive or whatever that stuff is that makes you feel protected, uh, set that aside and just go, okay, I'm just going to listen to someone else's story. Mm. And like, I've never been to war. Like I've never had to have a five-year-old kid in my arms and, and dress a wound from a war battle or from napalm or agent orange or something like that. Like the, at 18 years old and 19 years old, the, and, and he, he took her, he, he's like, Hey, I made mistakes. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, I talk with my birth mother after this, and she has a version of, of the truth that she lived. And so, uh, but, yeah, like, I, I, it's, it's, a, it's a tough, tough set of circumstances. Yeah. Did it close a circle for you? They say a lot of times when something ends, it allows for something to begin. Do you feel like something may begin here? Sure. Like, we, we left it open. We're going to, um, you know, try to, you know, connect again in the future and, and they live down in California, so uh, but they have an occasion to come up here every once in a while. So, yeah, we're gonna leave it open, and it was, uh, I think it was it was good for both of us. Yeah. All right. Uh, put a bow around it. What would you say to people that are thinking about uh, reaching out and uh, reaching and just... out to? Uh, I would say go for it. Like like, but prepare yourself for the worst and hope for the best. Yeah. Like just me- you have to mentally go down each road. Mm-hmm. And, and if you do that and are okay with no, yeah. uh, it, it's not an after-school special. Yeah. Like, it's not shot in some, you know, uh, gauzy, blurry film stock and everybody runs off into the field afterwards. Like, it, it could be no. This could bring up a lot of pain. Uh, but w- if the timing is right and you're open-minded uh, and open-hearted, I, I think it's it's good. Yeah. And I, I do encourage people that – 
you can you can reconnect whatever happened with that person in your life i believe you can still it, it, it's not going to be the same and it may not end up the way that you hope that it ends up but i i believe that you can reconnect with that person and uh in some way yeah in some way I tell you what, one of the reasons why I think I got uh, teary-eyed about reading this story is because I've I've watched you beautifully go through this. And I watched you... uh, I watched you seek out your birth mother and your birth father. And it's been heart-wrenching. And at the same time, beautiful to watch. And uh, to see you reconnect with them. And then on your birth mother's side, to have those sisters that look exactly like you in this world. And you always wonder... Are there other people out there that look like me? And you see pictures of them, and I know that you travel with them, and it's like, boom, there they are. There's uh, Ron Upshaw's sisters. But for me, I looked in the mirror, and I said, you know what? A couple years ago, my father died. I was estranged with him uh, for decades, and that was by his choice. But I knew he had died in Portland. I knew there was going to be nobody there. I knew that four people showed up, including this hospital nurse. And I could have showed up. I wasn't invited to go, but someone told me uh, that he had passed away and died Parkinson's. And I decided not to go. And the reason I decided not to go is I said, well, I'm not bitter. I just, over the course of my life, I feel like I've gotten better. And that story doesn't really bother me. Uh, I never really had a connection with him. I haven't known him since I was a young boy. And after listening to your story, I wish I would have gone. Mm. With the maturity that I have now, with some of the decisions I've made in my life, I wish I would have gone. Because I think my father, in his life, was probably doing his very best with the skill set he had. And there's a reason why he left my mom and four kids behind. There's a reason for that. And uh, I could have closed the circle, and I chose not to do that. And I don't feel guilt or shame from that, but it reminded me today, if you have an opportunity why people are still alive to go close that circle. My stepfather is dying, and I, over the holidays, I didn't want to go, I didn't want to be around that. And I'm like, you know what? I need to go, and I need to grow up and i need to go close that circle and so my son and i did that anyway ron thank you for that story that is an amazing story it's up at mynorthwest.com if you have thoughts on that you can hit us on the online trade account text line it's open at 98973 it's the ron and don show on cairo radio 